Witches, listen up. Registration is now open for So Mote That Con, TWL's first virtual conference on October 16th and 17th. Join us from anywhere in the world for incredible workshops, a bunch of badass raffle prizes, rituals led by me, Courtney, and Hillary, and more. Our keynote this year is Amy Chisari of The Coloring Book of Shadows. Other presenters include Evo Dominguez Jr., Amy Blackthorne, J. Allen Cross, Pamela Chen, Dakota St. Clair, Morgan Daimler, David Shi, and our very own Courtney. Register at the early bird rate at thatwitchlife.com. Price goes up September 21st, so save that extra cash for the Halloween store and book your ticket for So Mote That Con today. Okay, time for the show. Where's my blizzard? The path of the witch is so unique. The, the gift of witchcraft. I was able to see, hear, and communicate with spirits. It's a very personal relationship between a person and spirit. Carnal lust and fun things like that. Working with different energies and spirits and communicating. Creating magic. Powerful yeah. ritual and powerful <laughs> spells. She's actually sitting me in the cold. The role of the witch is to make change. Let's it be, yo. Let's it be. People ask me, like, okay, I'm a witch, and I don't know what to do. Three young friends realized they were witches. They scattered to different parts of the world following magic and spirit. Now, they're back in their hometown to share what they've learned. Welcome to That Witch Life Podcast, your home for living as a witch in today's world. So my neighbor was like, so I'm on a buy nothing group, which is like my favorite thing ever. And my neighbors, like all of us are growing things right now. Like I have a then you can collect more shiny stuff without actually buying anything. Correct. But also uh, vegetables and like we're all swapping garden stuff right now. I have like a ton of pears that are coming in like more than I could ever possibly eat. So like they're going, so people are going to get some of those. And anyway, someone was like, oh, does any, I have like some really large zucchini and when zucchini get really large, they're not the best for like just eating on their own. They can be like a little less flavorful, but they're perfect for zucchini bread. And she was like, oh, yeah, come and pick them up. And like this motherfucker, look at this. That's a watermelon. It's like two, that is two, not a zucchini. It's like a watermelon that's oblong. That's like as big as my head, bigger that's, than no, my head. that is twice the size of your head. It's twice the size of my head. And it's like, what the hell? I have two of them. Like how much fucking zucchini bread could I possibly like? I'm like, am I making it for a, a motherfucking army? Like, it sure seems like it. That's insanity. You then I have to be like, some. that's, but then I'm also like, oh my God, I have to, sh- I have to like shred fucking a zucchini that big is going to take like 11 hours specifically. Put it in a paper shredder. You know, there's a Cuisinart Stick for Stick it right in there. Yeah, but I think, <laughs> no, but you still have to get it in small enough pieces to get into the Cuisinart. It's true. It's not, not about, it's like that thing would have to be cut. It would be, it's like cutting a pumpkin. It's a bitch. Like it's so hard to cut through. So you have to like cut it in small enough pieces and also peel it before you put it in the motherfucker. And then it's like a night. Yeah. It's a whole thing. That sounds like a lot of work. I guess, I guess you don't have to peel it. You that welcome to that witch life podcast. I'm your host today. I'm Courtney. I do not have a giant zucchini in front of me. Wait, am I am I on a witchcraft podcast? Like, no, I'm, un- I'm yes. uncomfortable. And who are you? Um, my name is Susan. And no, it's not. I- <laughs> <laughs> you are uh, like so not a Susan. No, I'm not a Susan. My name is Hillary, uh, and I, I am a co-host of That Witch Life podcast, which is about witchcraft, not zucchinis. Contrary, but to that is the belief. biggest fucking zucchini. That is a bewitched zucchini. That is that is like, like a, that bitch is a witch who grows that. That's some magic ass that's, shit growing. That's in your fucking garden. Cinderella's. This is like the fairy godmother. It's like Cinderella's ill begotten sister didn't get a pumpkin, so the I'm, fairy godmother yes. is like, "I'm going to put you in this zucchini and roll you to the ball in that." That's how big that zucchini is. You know what? Every time we talk about fairy godmothers, I just think about our high school Cinderella play and how fucking ridiculous we were <laughs> and how my mom put. Like, I remember that because so, I watched it. You watch it. And my mom put like so many heinous bows on us, like so many bows. And like I had a beehive and it was like we were totally insane. And I'm pretty <laughs> sure we posted that picture to the Instagram account. But if we haven't, we should. No, it'll it needs to resurface. That it was needs, yeah, that's a good. I had I had the lead in my um, in the play in the musical the next year, 
But looking back, nothing was more fun than us being the wicked stepsisters in Cinderella. <laughs> it was the best the, thing. It's the one you had the lead in. Isn't that the one where my stepdad cried? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He cried at Anything Goes. Wasn't that the musical you were in? Yeah. It was, but he's he's a very because sentimental he's so, man. He's, he was so proud of Courtney. He was oh my so God, that's proud so of her. Cute. He was crying when she came out to say hi. That's so cute. He was just this big man. He was wiping his tears. So good in that show. I had graduated, uh, so I didn't get to do that with you, but I came and watched it. Oh, my God. Um, We actually had a phenomenal interview with Amy Blackthorne talking oh, about so the liminal good. in witchcraft. And Kanani wasn't with us because I suck parenting or something. I know. Fuck. Uh, they're still here. Uh, priorities. I know. They're still here. You didn't get rid of them. I know. They're still here. Oh, I God. look every once you, in a while. You, you had like, really? You had. Okay. 10 more years. All right. You had one job to get rid of them and then you just didn't. I know. They're still there. Freeloaders. Then Kanani, this will mean nothing to you, but I just want you to hear this. I am blessing you with rat piss. Okay. What? Remember the blessings of rat piss? No. What? I don't that remember. That was part of the interview. Oh my God. Okay. Well, you have to listen to the interview. Oh, with yes. Amy Black the interview with Amy Black. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Sorry. I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> well, when yes. you hear the interview, you'll understand. Yes. Yeah. Well, also I'm still just going to have the glazed over look on my face. <laughs> oh, it's good. It's good. I'm just like, that's fine. I'm like oh, every good. other parent, unfortunately. Parent slash teacher slash teaching admin slash anyone has anything to do with schools waiting for two weeks after school starts them to say um this isn't working we're gonna have to do cdl and then there's just a simultaneous scream heard around the world it's what everyone's terrified of and i'm Every, yeah i'm i'm everyone far away galaxy obi-wan will say i heard the simultaneous screams of seven billion parents and then suddenly it just snuffed out because they gave up their heads all exploded and it was just gone it's gone. No, it wasn't Alderaan. It was Earth. I actually saw an interview with Jason Bateman, who's hilarious, by the way. And he was talking about, you know, how he'd always wanted to be a father and all these things. And he's like, but I just want to clarify with this whole pandemic. I never signed on to spending this much time with my kids. Like, <laughs> this was never supposed to be part of that plan. Like, this is you're like, like I didn't uh... it's like I didn't realize that, you know, like. That's not what any parent. Expected. This isn't the 1800s where it's like we all live in a cabin. And we like have to chop our own firewood and be together 24 hours a day. No, like... because even then the kids are like distributed across the farm to do different yeah, chores. It's true. And they went to school. So this sucks even more than the 1800s. Yes. Is what you're telling me. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. They used to go to school. They would go uphill both ways in the yeah, snow to the know. one room schoolhouse. Yeah. Yep. It's bullshit. All right. Speaking of other, um, what is it like? It's our generations. It, it, it's that, that, um, Ben Affleck picture where he's outside just looking completely fed up and done smoking a cigarette saying this is like the, this is the Gen X and millennials going through their fifth you know unprecedented event oh my god I mean it's just how we feel we're just like okay see at least when the world was at least when the world was going to end when it hit to be 2000 remember that oh yeah, yeah. I remember. at least that was only one night that we had to wait and be like are we going to wake up in the morning I don't know what's going to happen I don't know that was the first night I had sex. Was it really? Back when I still, it was. That was what I believed that virginity was a const um, concept and not actually a patriarchal construct because being a, having sex doesn't change you. Um, yeah, that was the night I gave it up. I mean, it's, we were all taught that, you know, like that's yes. like, we were all taught that. And then as adults, you're like, wow, that's really fucked up. That's why I was really upset. We were watching, um, uh, oh God, what's the movie? No, it wasn't Practical Magic. What's the other one? The Bette Midler one. Are you talking about Hocus um, Pocus? Hocus Pocus. Hocus Pocus. Yeah, they have the whole focus on virginity. I'm like, I'm uncomfortable with this children's movie talking about virginity, all this like also it's patriarchal construct. But um yeah, but we this week are coming up on the 20th anniversary of 9-11. Which is wild. Which is wild. And I bring this up for a few reasons, not to do the whole where were you when it happened thing. Um, <laughs> but Although I think we all know where were you? I was asleep in my apartment in Everett. My 
husband at the time. Well, no, he wasn't my husband. He was my boyfriend at the time. Uh, was at work, and I got a call from my mom crying, telling me to turn on the news. And I turned on the news, and I watched the second tower go down. Mm. Yeah. So I was, I was, I had fallen asleep on the couch uh, in my house, and I with the TV on, and I woke up. And I was like, what fucking movie is this? And like the first tower was smoking, like it was like on fire, right? And I was like, what the fuck is happening? And it took me a while to even realize that that was news, right? Like I right, was looking right. at it, it like it was show. some TV, like movie or some shit, you know? Like I was like, what is this? And then I was like, CNN, and I was like, oh, this has got to be like, so I started changing the channel because I was like, you know, like this is this must be like a movie where like they're showing the news on the movie. Right, right. right. And right. then I turned to NBC and the next news and the next <laughs> one. Too, yeah. And then I was like, oh, my fucking God. And then I also watched the second plane hit. And I was like, I, I'm trying to remember. I think the first one was smoking. I don't yeah. think it had yeah. fallen yet when I saw the first no, no. one. But then I remember no. seeing the second No, because plane they were hit. both up when the yeah, plane hit. At so, yeah, at one time. Yeah. And so I stood there and I was like uh uh what just happened yeah. you know and then i like called my parents and i was like get get up immediately we're being attacked yeah i just it was so like you it it was it was like watching a movie it was so surreal that it was like this doesn't it did happen. it was it didn't register courtney you yeah. were in new york i was no no i was i wasn't living in new york then i was I was living in Oregon, but I was on the East Coast that summer. That's right. Um, that was I was in New Hampshire most of the summer, and then I was actually in South Carolina. Yeah, yeah, I was in South Carolina for a couple of weeks um, visiting my mom's family, and my grand was the one who I was actually coming back from a run um, back when I used to do things like run, and she was <laughs> telling me that um, you know she was just she just the Southern accent. She leans to the top of the stairs. She goes, Courtney, there's a plane that's hit one of the twin towers and then there's another plane that hit the other and then she made me go grocery shopping with her because she said don't worry baby them men they are in hail they are in hail now we gotta go get you some cheese. your daddy likes pickled watermelon white ride and so that's when you like oh my god there's actually i don't know if you guys have seen this but there's actually gonna be there's actually gonna be and i'm actually really interested to watch this there's a documentary on that's coming up i can't remember if it's cnn or another news station that was doing it but they're actually doing a documentary on the kids that were in the class when bush was sitting in front of the oh, kids class. Holy shit. i think it was a Ooh. kindergarten class yeah it was like kindergarten and it's like whispered in his ear and you can see like his eyes start rolling around in his head like um uh -oh. what do i do yeah what do i do i can't like jump up and run out I of can't, here like a mile because there's little children Right. right. And so it's a documentary about the kids Whoa. in that class and their and kind of how Whoa. that shaped, you know, their life and impacted them in some way to kind that's of wild. have been a part. I totally want to see it. That's, I, that's actually totally, kind of cool. Yeah, it's a it's kind of an angle I've never really thought about before about how like they really were a part of history you know, to have been there. There's also, there's also a podcast, um, people, I, I recommend people listen to, and it's called King of the World. Uh -huh. And it's about a young man, a Pakistani American man who was in high school at nine 11. Um, and so oh. talking about the experiences that he had being, um, you know, being raised Muslim and being in Boston, um, when this happened and the experiences he received from like absolutely atrocious, I can't even imagine uh, atrocious things that were, were said and done to him. I'm just into the, it's a seven part series. I've just listened to part one. So I would recommend people look that one up. Um, that sounds incredible actually. Yeah. So that's an important one to, to listen to. And you know, this was the start of my witchcraft journey was right around nine 11. Um, so it's like officially half of my life has been really entrenched in this path. If not fully, I don't, I don't know that I would ever say be fully devoted to it. That's like a whole, uh, my life is about a lot of things. It's not just about being a witch, but it sure. has really defined yeah. my path. It's changed my career. Oh, it's changed, it's changed where I live. It's changed who I love. It's changed all of these things. It's made me do this fucking podcast. There was no such thing as a podcast back in 2001 in any way that I recognize them. But, um, but I, I think, so this is, this has been, um, you know, period of circling back. I may do one of those videos like on TikTok where you talk to your younger self. 
<laughs> I love those videos. They just make me cry. Yeah, they're they're a lot. I like watch them when I it's it's like at, like sometimes when you just need to have a good cry and I'm like, I'm just going to watch these and cry repeatedly. Yeah, it's a whole thing. Um, well, speaking of things that are about healing from crying, I'm getting better with my transitions, aren't I? Just good like job. Good moving job. There. Yeah, I just finished a 12 part bath series for myself. That was part of my healing process. It was one of the things that uh, Hillary, you and I were talking about this, or maybe it was, I think I talked about this with each of you, you talked, separately. You definitely that, did it with me. Yeah, that witchcraft has yet to really provide the kind of grieving and healing practices that say a lot of other religions have. I mean, because to me, since my loss, I've been leaning a lot more into, I wouldn't say I'm leaning more into Buddhism, but I've been reading a lot more about the Buddhist practice of, of addressing suffering, because I feel like the Buddhists have a really good, uh, good, solid method of how to process grief. And I don't, I, I know that there may be tools and tactics out there, but there isn't the kind of solid practice and resources that many other religions have around grief and grieving and loss. Um, so I, the spirits that I work with suggested that I do a 12 part bath series. They said to do it 12 days. I skipped a couple days here and there because I either got tired, I got busy, I got drunk or something like that. So there would be a couple of times I would go a day or two without. Sure. But I finally finished my 12th bath. And I have to tell you, I had this really incredible dream last night and I'm not sure what it's all about. Um, Kanani, I was, I told you about it. I dreamt that I got a letter from my ex, a different ex. Um, the ex that I was crying about on your couch that one time hit re, oh, yeah. but I dreamt that he sent me a letter and I don't remember everything that it said, but I do remember it was very, I remember feeling like good about it. And I was, I turned, I guess I turned to my husband or Kanani because they tend to be interchangeable in my dreams. And I was like, well, I'm obviously not going to write it back, but I was like, but I feel like I need to show this to someone. I think Rhea was looking for you to show it to you. I don't know what was so I don't I don't know what what that dream was about. I don't really know that I need to know what it was yeah. about, but it feels like there was some a piece of healing. And you know, I try to um the reason I chose the reason I think it was 12 is that I was 12 weeks into my pregnancy when I lost the pregnancy. Right. And so the 12 was the 12 days weeks. Yeah. Is a 12 yeah, it was like one day for each week each that week. was lost. Yeah. And um, I think the only other parallel is losing that relationship had at that point been my biggest heartbreak. And then I was so happy with the chapter that came after that meeting my husband, like, okay, this is, you know, cause this is the relationship I, I want to be in. Right. Right. And it's, it's in, on paper and in practicality, everything about it works in a way that the other relationship never would have. And I couldn't have seen that at the time. And so sometimes I think, um, so I wonder if he represents like losing something you wanted and it being a big heartbreak, but then there being, you know, being something bright on the other side. I hope so anyway, but it was just a very strange response to a dream like that where it's like, oh, well, I'm obviously not going to write back, but I would need to show it to someone. But I need to show it. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe me talk, talking about it on the podcast is me showing it to someone, but yeah, it was a beautiful letter. It was on golden shining paper and it said nice things. I don't remember what the nice things were, but I was like, well, I'm not going to write it back. We're not going to start a correspondence, but nope. I want to show it to someone. I mean, I wonder if that's like showing closure, but I wonder, I mean, I wonder if it's just an example of closure to show. Right. You know what I mean? Not that like, that's the closure, but that like, exactly that like something is, the closure is that you feel no need to respond, I think. The need to respond. And it's also, I don't feel like I need closure with this person. I feel like yeah. that closure has already happened. It happened a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. You know, but I feel like he's a symbol of a different kind of closure. Yeah, sometimes it's like, that's what I wonder. I wonder if that's like an example. It's like showing you an example of closure to tell you that you completed this thing, this like process to, to symbolize the completion of that process. Right. You know. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Very. I had some I had an interesting dream last night that I actually remember some of it and I'm not sharing. So did you get swallowed this time? Huh? I did not. 
No, you know, I, I would never allow such a thing. That wouldn't happen. <laughs> you would punch the whale in the mouth. I'd punch it right in the face. <laughs> Sabrina responded when she was, she was transcribing the episode. And she goes, I would have totally punched the whale in the mouth. <laughs> totally. <laughs> and speaking of, I had, so her daughter is my goddaughter and I had her over last week. We actually broke out the fire pits. Uh, one of the nights that she was over, we actually broke out some s'mores. Yeah. And, and actually, first, I think I'm, they made hot dogs. First, they made hot dogs over the fire pit. And then we made s'mores. Like, life lock achieved, like, in my head. It was just, like, so many, like, happy, happy little, like, bubbles and lights going off. Like, I've always wanted to have a fire pit. And to be able, and I'm like, it's I'm like seriously so sitting good. there, like, Am I ever going to go camping again? I don't know. If I can roast a fucking hot dog right here in a s'more and then why go inside and sleep in yeah. my own bed. Right. Like, well, I'm not sure why sleeping in a tent sounds like a good idea anymore. We did. Oh, and it was the full moon. We it was she was here for the full moon. And so we roasted hot dogs. We did s'mores. And then uh, I had them all write on a piece of paper some things that they would like to let go of. Um. And my daughter said I could share like one of her things was her worry of the upcoming school year, Aww. things like that. And um, and then she brought over some crystals and I had the kids get out some crystals. and We put them around the fire pit to charge Aww. in the full moon. Oh, I love that. And so and I put some uh, herbs in the fire and whatnot to kind of burn. And then uh, and then, like I said, we left the the crystals around the fire pit to just charge out into the full moon because it's in charge, my pretties, space. charge, charge, my pretties. And uh, so that was actually really fun. So I have now officially used the fire pits. Yay. Made s'mores, charged and crystals in my backyard, done a full, full moon ritual in my new house. I love it. And you also did an accidental um, like cleansing what do we call it? a smoke clearing or like smoke hazing so smoke. once i once once i broke out my pyroness with a fire pit i've like burned all <laughs> kinds of stuff in there i burned everything you burned your marriage certificate everything i can get my hands on i'm i'm setting on fire oh my god oh my the god light bill I, I, it would it would it would be funny if it weren't 100 percent factual and terrifying my husband and <laughs> so I have, there's just, there's so much random stuff and cardboard and just things like that. And I'm just like, hmm, I'm going to set it on fire. So I had some stuff going and I have tons of, uh, every year I buy lavender. I go to lavender festivals. I buy bunches and bunches of lavender. I cannot, I, I can't just throw it away. I just can't. I have to do something with it. And it just eventually gets dusty and it's not good anymore. And so it just kind of goes somewhere. And of course, I packed it all with me. And so I have bunches of just dusty old lavender. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to burn it in the fire pit. So I took <laughs> a couple of the bunches and I just kind of fanned them out in the fire fire pit to make sure they all caught and whatnot. And they went up in a matter because I mean they're super super dry and plus Su they still and have super I'm sure, flammable, some yeah and some oils I'm sure still left yep, in there yep so they just went up really fast all at the same time and all of a sudden there was this huge plume of smoke and it was the most amazing it was one of the most amazing things I've ever experienced the smoke just washed over me. And then I watched the smoke. It just, it was, the thing was, is it didn't just like smoke and then go out immediately. It smoked for a really oddly long time. And this plume of smoke just started going to all four corners of my yard. And I could, I just watched it blowing all through over my house, over my fence, over my back fence, my side fence. It was the, I mean. Oh yeah. You were totally was, protecting your property. That's amazing. It was amazing. Now what it was, the spirit of lavender was like, okay, bitch, you have been ratcheted up for way too long. Yep. We're just going to take this shit out now. It was amazing. And I, oh and like God. I said, I couldn't believe how long it smoked and it just, it did. It just kind of worked its way all around my yard, over my house, behind my house. But when it first went up, it just kind of went right over and, and it felt like it just went right through me. And it was just like, and of course it smelled Start. like heaven. 
start with the tough stuff and then oh, it gets easier from there. Cleanse it was, Kanani. It was amazing. And so I've, I've burnt, I think, I have two giant bundles that I still need to burn, but I was going to wait for the new moon. Mm. So I'm kind of thinking that this might be a thing that I do is like Smart. save some and, and start the fire with it. That's really and, good. And um, I've got a couple bundles, you know, that I'm still kind of saving for that, but it was it was wicked cool. I don't even know how, like I said, I just kind of did it like, well, this is, if I have to dispose of lavender, this I feel okay with. I feel okay with, you know, burning it and having it, it go away. I'm not going to just throw it in a garbage can. And so to have it kind of do that was just, it was awesome. I was yeah, super excited. Then you've been blissed out for the yes. past two days. Yes. I mean, whatever it takes. Right? Exactly. I know. Whatever it takes to... Somebody, some people just down. need a little pinch of lavender in a fire in their cold. No, Kanani needs to burn a whole field. She needs to that's light the whole motherfucker off. on fire. Everything has yes. to burn. Well, speaking of, uh, speaking now that now my transition's failing me, guys. Here do I do this? How speaking, rat piss. Ra, speaking of rat piss, we're having a conference. <laughs> that sounds terrible. <laughs> That was a horrible transition. <laughs> sometimes, oh yeah. So the way we yeah. should tra the real transition is like sometimes you have to piss and also sometimes you have to floss, and so we're having a conference. <laughs> we are having a conference, and tickets about, are speaking going of things that make you feel good. We're having a conference. <laughs> we're having a conference. Speaking of having a conference. We are having a conference <laughs> and it's douche. called Somo that Con. God damn it's it. Called... <laughs> it's called Somo that Con and tickets are moving really fast. They are. They're selling like crazy. I it's know. It's so exciting. I know. Uh, early bird registration is still open and open until September 21st. And then the price is going to go up. So um, if Get you're thinking it. of coming, go ahead and do it. It is um, October 16th and 17th. All virtual. Join us from anywhere in the world. We have 11 speakers coming, some of our most popular guests. Amy Blackthorne is among them. Um, if you loved our conversation with Evo Dominguez Jr. last week, as many people did, heard so much incredible feedback about that. Um, he will be speaking as well as Pamela Chen, whom we had the week before, and Dakota St. Clair. We just released a bonus episode with them about Saint Magic. They will also be speaking and a ton of other great speakers. The whole lineup is listed on our website at thatwitchlife.com. Um, you can register for and the conference. And if you can't make it those days, we will have it available to listen to later. Yes, but you must. After. But you must register in advance in order to have access to the recording. So thank you, Kanani. Um, so uh, yeah, don't sleep on that, friends, because we we really want you there. And I've got a feeling this is this is gonna this is gonna sell out. So um, yeah, I agree. Get it. Make sure you get in on it now. Yeah, and get that discount. The early word discount is pretty big. It's awesome. And Patreon supporters at the TWL squad and above get a discounted rate as well. Yeah. Get an even, yeah, steeper discount. So yep. if you're thinking about joining us on Patreon, now could be the time. Um, meantime, a couple other things we want to make sure everybody has on their radar. Um, our friend Megan over at Daughter of Bridget. She wants everybody to know she, um, Pagan Pride in Tower Grove, Missouri is still happening. And the new date is September the 25th. She will have a booth there. Speaking of lavender things. She has a lot of lavender products, wax melts, um, smoke sticks, and really beautiful jewelry um, that she hand wraps herself with crystals. Um, and so if you have, you go see her at her booth, um, then you get $5 off any of the jewelry if you mention that you heard about her on That Witch Life. So don't be sure to check that out. And also, um, are you all familiar with Byron Ballard, witchcraft author? I've heard of Byron Ballard before. Yeah, the name sounds familiar. Super fun. She was. Um, I met her at Fairy uh, Fairy Worlds a couple years ago. Or no, Fairy Con a couple years ago. Um, when my friend Wendy and I had um the bladder from a wine box in our bag, we were filling our our coffee cups with it. I think Seems we just passed right. it around the table. Yeah, yes, yeah, so we hung out with her. By um, Byron Ballard's a really great author and super fun. She has a new book out called Seasons of a Magical Life which provides advice on spiritual and physical immersion into the seasons and um, applies to readers of all areas, rural, urban, and suburban. So it's available through Wiser Books, or you can ask for it at any metaphysical bookstore. So it's called Seasons of a Magical Life. Um, let's try this other transition, Kanani. 
Kanani a minute ago mentioned Patreon. And speaking of Patreon, we want to give a thanks to all of our supporters and remind everybody that if you want to support the show and get all kinds of really great bonus content um, to support us on Patreon. Um, Last week, if if you heard our bonus episode with Dakota St. Clair and loved it, well, you should know that the Patreon listeners got to hear it several days ahead of time. So for as little as a dollar a month, you can join us for that and other witchy content. Higher levels get you access to our private Facebook page, we have a lot of really great discussions about things that come up on the show. People give each other a lot of advice. Um, a lot of people have made great witchy friends that way. Yeah, I really love that group. It's so fun. And I've started trying to do more lives on there. So I'm, I'm <laughs> trying to I, I'm trying to do it once a week. I can't always it doesn't always seem to pan out that way. But I'm trying to at least once a week do a live on our witch squad just to say hi to everybody and tell everybody what's going on totally. so it's just a lot of fun yeah yeah we have a good time it's a great we community a great so if you join us on patreon you can join that um as well as our live virtual special events um you can also get your episodes early or you can get longer at free episodes you can even get a quarterly subscription box you can even get a tarot card pull you for you on the show and today i am pulling for samuel and Samuel has the two of pentacles. This is a card about weighing options. Sometimes when we get this card, we're so anxious about picking the wrong option that we forget to be thankful that we have options at all. So this is a card to say, step back and be grateful that you have different avenues that you can take right now. And be mindful that no matter what you take, you're going to end up where you're supposed to be. It's just one route takes you left, one route takes you right, but you still end up on the path you're supposed to go. So you really can't be too hard on yourself for making a decision that you're making. So, so thank you, Samuel, for joining us at the Samote That Shit level, which gets you that quarterly subscription box. And don't forget, as Kanani mentioned, if you join at the TWL Witch Squad level or higher, you get an even steeper discount to Samote That Con. Um, other ways to support the show. If you can't do a monthly donation, feel free to buy us a coffee. We really appreciate it. It's really, really thoughtful and so, so great. Um, or buy that witch life merchandise on Etsy or consider becoming an episode sponsor. Do you have a business you would like to promote, um, or an event or anything like that? And there's thousands of witches that want to hear about it. We can help connect you or just purchase a shout out just to let people know about something coming up or send love to your favorite witch. It's like cameo only we don't have to put on pants. Right? Exactly. Right? Yeah. Boo pants. Boo pants. Find out more on our website at thatwitchlife.com. And don't forget to register for SoMote That Con while you're there. Okay, let's hear from a word from our sponsors. Hillary and I had the best time talking with Amy Blackthorne, and you will love our conversation with Amy and will immediately run out and purchase all of her books. But there's one in particular we want to make sure you pick up, and that is Blackthorne's Botanical Brews. Blackthorne's Botanical Brews outlines the magical uses for many well-loved traditional beverage ingredients found throughout time. Readers will learn what potions are, what purpose they serve, and how to create their own brews, bitters, vermouth, and kombucha, as well as how to blend the perfect tea for their magical desires. One part, the drunken botanist, one part, Blackthorn's botanical magic, shaken, not stirred. Blackthorn's botanical brews offers a fresh, fun way of bringing botanical magic into your kitchen, cocktail parties, and home remedies. Blackthorn's Botanical Brews has something for everyone. This book outlines the magical uses for many well-loved traditional beverage ingredients found throughout time. The book includes getting to know your spirits, adding magic to your daily activities in the kitchen, in the bar, fruit that's feeling frisky, herbal beers, meat and cider, and what to do with leftover potions. So you can order Blackthorn's Botanical Brews wherever you get your books. Please try to support metaphysical bookstores whenever you can and we want to thank Wiser Books for being an episode sponsor. Okay, so I don't like surprises. I need to know everything that is going on and everything that is ever going to happen, which is why I read all the spoilers before watching any shows. Therefore, you're probably not surprised that I'm a total astrology junkie. I want to know everything my life has in store for me so I can better plan to maximize my success and take better advantage of my lazy laying around time. I'm super excited to introduce you to one of our very favorite astrologers, Brittany Goss, the space witch behind Rebel Astrology. 
offering astrology consultations and life coaching to help women lead their most authentic lives. Brittany's consultation style is based on the modern school of evolutionary astrology in which she reads the chart as a map of the soul's path through lifetimes. She also uses traditional astrological techniques in her practice. This enables her to provide a full complex chart reading for every client. I mean, who doesn't like to hear all about themselves? I know I do, which is why I just love Rebel Astrology, which not only offers natal chart readings, but predictive readings, relationship readings, and more. Brittany also has a select few spots open in her Rebel Coaching Program, which is a year-long journey using astrology to help you step courageously into your authenticity, meet your goals, and improve your life. You can book a coaching discovery call to find out more. To book your consultation or coaching discovery call, go to rebelastrology.net and be sure to follow Brittany on Instagram at rebelastrology and find her on Facebook at Rebel Astro. Thank you to Rebel Astrology for being an episode sponsor. Well, we are welcoming Amy Blackthorne back to the show. It's been, I think it's been almost two years since we've had you on. Yes. Far too long. Way absolutely, too long. absolutely unacceptable. I, I accept full responsibility, and I feel terrible about it. <laughs> so, um, Amy Blackthorne, in addition to be, in addition to being one of my favorite witches, is a professional intuitive and the best selling author of Blackthorne's Botanical Magic, Sacred Smoke, and Blackthorne's Botanical Brews. She has appeared on HuffPo Live, Netflix's Top Ten Secrets and Mysteries, and an episode about supernatural abilities and the AP Newswire. Amy Amy lives in Delaware, and you can find Amy's tea shop at blackthornbotanicals.com. Amy, welcome back. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so tickled to be here. Yeah, we're so excited to have you back. How have you been? What's been going on in this, these crazy last 18 fucking months? Oh my goodness. I have been holed up in my my beautiful office. It is beautiful. There's, there's like four altars per room in the house. <laughs> so, <laughs> we just sort of add shrines as they go along. It's a, it's a, it's a big house. Like it's a five bedroom house. So there's, there's like three or four As in altars. Delaware, most people can afford it in Delaware. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, you're, you're not wrong. Better taxes than Maryland. I moved from Maryland originally. Mm. Um, but I got this house 18 years ago. Yeah. Just like, so it's, it's been great. Uh, the values have really gone up, especially with people doing housing things. I've I've just been writing. I'm actually writing my fifth book now. Damn. I turned in edits on the fourth uh, last Tuesday, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I already had this get the contract signed for book five. Okay, so, so I am, uh, you I don't know. You probably can't tell us much about book five, but what can you tell us about book four? And anything you want to tell us about book five, just as like a sneak peek. So sneak tell sneak. us about book. Yeah, tell us about so book four, book four is Blackthorn's protection magic. Mm. I got to take my background into security and weave it with my witchy background and come out with something that is, so it's Blackthorn's Protection Magic, a Greenwich's Guide to Mental and Physical Self-Defense. Very good. That's so awesome. Yeah. I'm so, so excited for that. It, the, the middle of the book I, I, I is my favorite. I, do, I try not to pick favorites, but the middle bit of, of the Protection Magic is my favorite because it's actually... There's an escape and evasion course in there. There's um, there are things like how to escape handcuffs, duct tape, rope, zip ties, chains, like how to get away, how to be safe. Mm. Um, and that's things that I think are really important to understand. It's not that like, don't park in dark corners that crap that people put your keys in a claw. Put your keys in a claw. Every time I see it, it makes my hair curl. Like you, you probably see me yell it. about it. Yeah. I'm watching Amy. I'm watching Amy's face explode right now. She's like, Courtney, it's not funny. Amy uh, is so uncomfortable right now. <laughs> so uncomfortable. I think uh, we should make you a gift. This is a gif, an angry gif that now needs to be on the internet. Amy Blackthorne, when you mentioned putting your keys in a claw, that's another head exploding gif for Twitter. You're welcome. Somebody create it because I don't know how. <laughs> uh, yeah, I get, I get, I do, I do talk about that in my, in my, so I've been teaching all sorts of defense classes for the last 11 years now. And that's the, the one that won't die. Oh, I, I, I walk with my keys between my fingers and I, and I, please don't do this. At those people listening at home, like that's, that is how you break your fingers. Don't punch somebody oh. with your key hand. You'll break your fingers. Then you won't have things to fight back with. 
it's easier to take you out if you can't use your hands. See, um, I didn't even know that. I did not know that. But that's that is an amazingly astute point that that could actually hurt someone. And oh, yeah. It, you know, oh, yeah. You break your hand like that. It is a lot easier to break your fingers than you think they are. They're they're just little twigs. They will break. Mm. I, yeah. I'm still healing a broken toe from five months ago. Oh, oh God. That's the worst, too. Because <laughs> there's not shit you can do about it. Well, I'm mm -hmm. glad that you mentioned that in the book, because to be honest, what I know of escaping situations is all that I learned from Alexis Rose and Schitt's Creek when she told David how to escape from duct tape. That is totally a real thing. That's really how you do it. <laughs> oh, my you, God. You just bring your hands up over your head and you slam them as hard as you can down on your hips. And it make, what it does is it creates the same angle that we tear the duct tape with. Okay. So it's a real thing that, that really works. Please absolutely listen to Alexis. On, the, on that one thing <laughs> you're like oh you're like on that i'm only endorsing that one thing though <laughs> what else can we expect from the next blackthorn i'm really excited because it's not there's so many books out there that i i got to delve into and really pick apart but there's things like psychic exercises to strengthen your your psychic senses for just for the realm of protection um and there was there's so many neat little things where we look at the idea of how we protect ourselves and we look at the things that we've been taught our whole lives about how we are protecting ourselves. So it's such a joy to write. Um, mm. There was, I will, I will let people know there's a very personal um, protection story of mine in there. There's it's, it's one of my books. So I always teach with little stories, but there's one story in particular that was difficult to write. And uh, there's actually content warnings at the beginning of the, that section, just because of those, those mm. things that are discussed mm -hmm. because it's very important to me to make sure everyone's taking care of themselves. Right. So don't read things that are difficult um, when you're not prepared for them. So, yeah, you can come back to them later. It's, 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 I think the content warnings are so are helpful because I mean, uh, you know, I had a pretty serious loss about a month ago. And so I'm like, I don't want to look at certain things right now. I just kind of need to look at, look at dog videos and videos of supernatural hauntings in state parks is all that I really want to see in my content feed right now. Um, also, and also, pigs. also pigs. Also pigs. Yes. Also, <laughs> also pigs. That's going to be Hillary's when Hillary writes her magic book, it's going to be called witchcraft with Hillary and also pigs. <laughs> and, and, and also pigs. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I feel like you can add the sentence or the, the, the phrase and also pigs to anything and it can be accurate. So I, yeah, really? Yeah. 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 It's all, but um, the best animals. So when does the protection book come out? Uh, it looks like January. I don't okay. have the, the, the firm release date yet, but I, I had a, it's not final yet, so I'm not posting it anywhere, but I can show you. Oh, show me, show me, show me, please. The cover. I'm sorry, people at home, but it's not final yet, so I can't post it anywhere. Oh, but the, the privileges moment, of being a podcast host. The, the minute it's available, I promise. Everyone be jealous. <laughs> <gasps> oh, oh, my, my God. God. <laughs> There's not a it's, pig on it, but we still love it. There's no pig it's on beautiful. it, but it's beautiful. The, there's a little teeny drop of blood in it. There's, it's just it's all perfect. I, that's, I love that. I love and it. I, I love that it has family resemblance between Blackthorn's Botanical Magic and Botanical Brews. Like it's got the chartreuse of brews and the the black from both books. It's it's just it's you can tell that they're related. Yeah, they look related. That. Yep, yep. Love it. I'm so excited for you. So something that I have heard you talk about a lot and that you will be talking about at some that con is witches are the gateway to the in between. So what does that, what does that mean for you um, or for other witches? For me, uh, me especially. So I grew up, my parent, my father is a musician. Mm -hmm. I grew up listening to him play always. I mean, if he wasn't at work, you know, he was somewhere with his guitar uh, and he he played with me, blues musicians as long as I can remember uh, different blues festivals and blues events. Like I was going to blues festivals before I could walk. Mm. Um, Baltimore's blues history has is very incredible. It has a lot to do with the um, the influx of Gullah culture into Baltimore during the fifties. Mm. They were fleeing from South Carolina and and landing in Baltimore. So we had this really great influx of incredible music and understanding and 
uh, this this cultural rebirth. Really fantastic history if you want to look into it. Uh, so my favorite thing in the whole world is the slight intake of breath before a singer starts to sing. Mm. Or you can hear the little squeak when their fingers move between frets. Yeah. Like yeah. There's no music in that moment. There's just that little squeak. That is magic. That is that intake of breath before something happens. And that squeak between the frets is just an incredible idea of where magic lives because it's not one thing or the other, just that moment. It's the doorway between two things. Mm -hmm. And that's where magic lives. We are not in one room. We're not in the next. We're in the doorway. You're not on land or in the sea. You're in that in-between. And those in-between places can be found everywhere. But that's where magic is hiding. That's where magic is waiting because we spend so much time doing and we, aren't, we don't allow ourselves the ability to wait. Mm -hmm. That that's where that life lives because there's so much we, we need to go and do and think and be. But if we allow ourselves a few minutes to just be... The magic that comes from those places, those times, those periods is incredible. Mm -hmm. The energy that we allow ourselves and the energy that we acknowledge when we have those times is limitless. There's, there's always a limit to the amount of space that we have. Say the, the space inside your house. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the spaces in between those places and you add it all up inside your house, even anyone who's ever renovated a house can tell you. The, the story of the house is actually laid in the in-between places. Mm, mm -hmm. that, um, that period of the 50s where um, the cultures were coming in, there's actually a museum that's dedicated or is, is being dedicated to the historical finds that were found in walls in Baltimore during that time. You oh. can find witch bottles and you can find coins and oh, newspapers yes. and that's really incredible amazing. things that tell those stories from things that are found in walls. Yes. And, and what you can, what people have left behind. Um, there was a really incredible um, historian that I was listening to and I, I feel bad because I can't remember her name. And she was talking about the best thing being to find in these places is a little rat's nest. She's like, cause the first thing they do is they gr gather everything into a, a little nest and then they pee on everything. It preserves things like newspapers oh, and it preserves them for the long time. Interesting. So you can find really incredible records, newspapers, and clippings, all sorts of things that tell these stories, and they're preserved, thanks to our furry little friends, making a nest. So and now we can just say, may you have the blessings of rat piss. <laughs> and that's an actual blessing. And that's and then you're not rude. It's just real. No, that's next time. You know what, Hillary, you know what we're going to do? When we get with Kanani to record the intro, let's bless her with, let's say, we may you be blessed with rat piss and just may see what she says. May we bless you with rat piss. And she's going to be like, she's going to be like, what? What? And we're going to be like, you, you don't know? You don't know? Well, you should have been on the episode. <laughs> Missed who out. Peed, who peed in her Cheerios? <laughs> it was a rat. Ha! It's a blessing. It's a blessing. That's fantastic. That makes me... I, I I feel that in a very deep way because I, I listeners may remember about a year ago when we had to do some unexpected renovations because of mold in our house, which just turned into, oh, look at all these terrible DIY jobs that are actually a it's fire like, trap you didn't know was going on. Renovate your whole upstairs. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, but in the process there, we we did find a box of old letters that this teenage boy had been keeping um, with all of like the correspondence with all of his girlfriends on the Oregon coast. Oh. And uh, he was, he was absolutely, like, he would, he kept them in their original envelopes and like marked if he'd responded. And my favorite story was um, of this girl named Velma that he was corresponding with. Um, if anybody has a great grandmother named Velma on the Oregon coast, I'm about to air all of her dirty laundry because she had a boyfriend and um, apparently they were really into each other and she, her parents were mad at her because she kept staying over with his family. Um, like they, cause they didn't have a car. And, and so she would live in the next town. And so when she would come into our town, 
you know, to see him, her parent, his parents would put her up. It sounded very PG and stuff like that. But there was one letter where I guess she had wanted to go further with him intimately. And he had said no. And she's like, I think you were right. And then there were a couple letters where she's like, Hey, I haven't heard from you in a while. Do you still want to keep in touch with me? And then she sent him a letter said, okay, I, I get the hint. I haven't heard from you in a while. I hope you're well, but thanks so much. But then she sent him a letter where she was scalding and irate because apparently he had, she had moved on, started dating someone else. And Francis heard about it and showed up to spy on her at a dance. And she ripped him an asshole. Like the, like, I'm just, gonna, girl. I'm just like, my men have not changed since the 20s. Get it. Haven't they? She's just like, she's writing about herself in third person at that point. She goes, well, you don't have to worry about Velma anymore. Cause even if you want a Velma, Velma's on the next train out of Oregon. Like just, Oh, she was mad at him. She's like, wow. you didn't write to me for six months and you hear I'm out with another fella and you come spying on me at the dance. Like, <laughs> I'm like, wow. <laughs> Did I also date flukes a few times? That, sound like, <laughs> it's like, that sounds like it's three like, of my ex-boyfriends. Four like of them, the, actually. It's like the question that is valid throughout the ages. Why are men? Why? Why are <laughs> why? they? Why? why are why? men? Why? 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 Like, <laughs> it's like, well, what if I wanted to date Velma again? Well, I she's literally not a fucking got... jar of peanut butter, asshole. You don't put her on the shelf. <laughs> and even peanut butter has a shelf life, you dick. <laughs> Apparently in six months. Fucking asshole. So actually when I found the woman who's, it was like the, the daughter of this guy, he passed away. Um, I, I found his obituary and was through that found his daughter. And I um, drove a box of letters over to her and she was so cute. She said, well, we always thought that maybe my dad was a bit of a philanderer before I, he met my mother. And I said, oh, uh, yeah, I think I have proof. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> But apparently, oh my god, that's really funny. Apparently, once he like went into the military, came back, um, he married his this he married his wife and apparently was a good boy after all that. But before that, he sowed some oats up and down the Oregon coast. <laughs> <laughs> so uh re relevant story. Uh this afternoon I someone sent me I'm gonna try and say this without dying. This this afternoon <laughs> I bet you can't read. This afternoon someone sent me or someone literally tagged me in a Facebook post that was like, this sounds like, <laughs> this sounds like a group that Hillary needs to be part of. And the title of the group Pigs is eight men. No, title, <laughs> the title of the group is why are men gestures vaguely like this? <laughs> <laughs> and so I, then I got, so then I got an alert that it was like, you couldn't see the entire thing. So the alert says your request to join Why Are Men has been approved. <laughs> Gestures vaguely. Why are Gestures. men like? <laughs> Why are men? Gestures vaguely like this. <laughs> I tweeted recently. I'm like, I finished my novel. Now all I need is a white man to give me feedback, preferably a white man who's never been published. <laughs> yeah, that's the best. Best, oh, best yes. feedback. I don't even have to ask for it. It comes unsolicited. <laughs> Every time. Oh, my God. Uh, all right. So um, you, you've talked about, like, I, I just love the description you have of the liminal being the breath before the song and the, the squeak of the fret. I'm never going to not hear that now. And I'm never going to not love that. Same. Thanks, yeah, to Amy. Love that. Hashtag it's thanks, beautiful. Amy. Um, but I'm, I'm wondering, like, so often which is talk about the liminal spaces, but I'm not sure that they fully are able to encompass that besides a, a physical, you know, moment of in between, what are some other liminal spaces that you see, which is occupy either in their, their journeys or roles in life? One of my favorite examples was the women who was, in, who were in charge of uh, the brewing, the mm -hmm. brewing vat, and creating fermented beers, wines, meats, anything that was fermented going into that brewing vat. And I feel like we as witches don't really, they don't take, we take it for granted that that cauldron isn't just a physical representation of the divine. We actually, it's, it's a lot of, there's a lot of different 
iron pentacle and the pearl pentacle and the this pentacle and that pentacle. Right. And people sort of gloss over the cauldron altogether because the, the cauldron is, or the, the pentacle is so in or hip or, or whatever. But the cauldron as a metaphor of placing ourselves into the realm of that liminal space and coming out as different people. I mean, I don't think that gets enough attention or enough understanding because when we, when you, when you, you journey into whether it's initiation or even as a self-dedication, the person you go into that journey with is not the same person who comes out. And that space of the cauldron where we, we do our practice and we do ritual and we, we really look at who we are as, as people, as witches, as women, as men, as, as non-binary, uh, when you really understand who you are going to become, you don't come back out the same person. Even mm-hmm. if you, you know, enter into a practice, you say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to practice for a year and a day. And I'm going to go to do, I'm going to study hard and I'm going to write in my dream journal or my book of shadows or whatever. The person that we become during that practice is such an honor to be, con- to be considered when we're looking at ourselves, when we're looking at our practice. I almost can't explain the depth of understanding that we come on the other side of that. Anyone who's gone through um, an initiation and spent a year in a day or three years in a day or what have you, these pieces that we sort of let go as we go through that period and the pieces that reinforce themselves are really incredible. Um, I'll give you a, a personal example. I went and I dedicated to, <laughs> I tell the, I tell the, the beginning part of the story in, in other podcasts, but not this one. Uh, so the minute I turned 18, I ran out and I joined the first coven I could find. Mm-hmm. Never do that. Date around a bit, do, you know, figure it out. But when it was time to really dedicate myself, you know, I, I got went through my dedicacy period and was getting ready to become the first degree Amy. Between points A and B, something happened. Uh, I died. <laughs> mm. uh, to the point where uh, like it was, it was a, it was a car accident. There was, there was extenuating circumstances. I was very lucky that my, my high priestess and my, my cousin was able to be there the next day when I woke up. You, I look at the person I was when I entered, it was a seminary program for witches. It was, um, the, the whole point was to become a member of the ministry, to go and have your own coven, to teach them, like go out in the world and teach witches, allow them to be who they're supposed to be. So I get a lot of questions from people who say, well, you know, if you, if you had a near-death experience, did it change who you were going to be, who you wanted to be, how you were looking at yourself? Well, I was really lucky because I was already a witch. I'd been practicing for a number of years. I had my, my self-dedication as a teenager and now journeying into adulthood as a, I felt a fully formed witch going out and doing my thing. Mm. But I never expected the person I was and the person I was going to be, to be the same person. But we just, we have no way of knowing who that person is going to be on the other side of that journey. Mm. So I had no idea that by the end of that first year, I would be in a wheelchair. I, I spent the next three years in a wheelchair then five years on platform crutches because I broke both my arms, both my legs, my pelvis cracked uh, in half, mm-hmm. my my face, I mean, broke in a couple different places. I didn't expect the person I was at the end of that specific journey. Now, nobody expects to die. I mean, they don't expect things like that to happen so spectacularly. But we don't really understand within ourselves that we can't see the end of the tunnel. When we enter one end, when we enter that cauldron of rebirth and to put ourselves out there as, as the witches we are going to be, mm-hmm. you can't see the end of the tunnel. That's why it's called faith. We know at some point there's an end there and not an oncoming train, but it's, that's why the, the journey of the witch takes that faith because you have no idea who you'll be when you come out the other side. Mm-hmm. We know the things that looking back at, at first year witches, you know, we, we sort of cringe at the thought things that we had. And, you know, I found my book of shadows from when I was probably 14 and I, I cringe at this person and it's, it's very adorable. It isn't anything really bad. It's just, 
I want to pat myself on the head and say, there, there, little one, it'll get better. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but there is no way um, a, a partner asked me, Saturday is my birthday. Happy birthday. Yay! Happy birthday. They asked, because they've known me since I was knee high to a grasshopper. They said, can you look back on, say, 14 year old Amy? And did you ever think that you'd be where you are today? And I said, I never thought I'd make it to this age because of some of the things that I went through. So I, I didn't expect to make it to this point. Mm. So I kept expecting to have a big freak out about my birthday. And it never came because I never expected to live to be this age. I just didn't. So mm-hmm. there's no way that, you know, me high to a grasshopper, nipper Amy could even fathom being an author and putting books out and being on podcasts or any of this, I had no frame of reference for who I'd become at the end of that journey. So diving into the cauldron and allowing yourself to be the person to create that person you're going to be to breathe in the, the rarefied air of liminality (laughs) or some crap. (laughs) I never could have pictured it. I never could have fathomed it. Um, it's something that I, I'd always wanted. I'd wanted a book with my name on it since before I could write my name. I just knew I was going to be writing about witchcraft, but mm-hmm. I knew I wanted to to share my stories with other people. Before I was in kindergarten, I was telling my own stories. So that the idea of that liminal space of that becoming is a verb. You know, we it sounds very trite to say, oh, we, will, we never stop learning, but it's, Not only is it so true, but it has to be because things that don't change, they die. Mm -hmm. If you don't keep going, if you don't keep evolving, your practice will die or something else. I mean, or you can physically pass from our realm. But it's so important that when we talk about that liminality, it's not just the idea of change. We are embracing it within a magical sphere to the point where this becomes that magical practice that embracing that change really creates a whole new person, sometimes physically, sometimes emotionally. Um, My, one of the very first uh, members of the community that I met is not the same person that they were uh, when we, when we met. And as witches, it's so much more important to make sure that we embrace the members of our community who have more physical changes than emotional changes. Uh, those of you who are listening, don't ever, I'm going to cry. Don't ever let you tell you you're not a witch because you're trans. I will, I will, I will, I will fight somebody for you. And then Hillary and I are right behind you, Amy. But <laughs> and then with our keys in our hands. So we're not going right. to break a finger. And then Hillary will turn into a rainbow dragon and br- burn everyone up. I'll be like, okay, you're gone. Just eviscerate you. You don't get to exist anymore. Privilege is revoked. Yeah. Yeah. There's no tolerance. There is no tolerance for exclusion in that way. Anywhere. There, anywhere. I, 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 yeah. First of all, I want to honor your story, Amy, and also welcome yeah. your tears. I can't yes, tell you how many same. times we've had this space on the podcast and I know people are going to feel heard because, you know, you heard them. I, um, I just really appreciate you saying that Amy and you bring it forward with the, the kind of strength of in the heart of, of a true ally. And, just, and I just hope that you know, more of us come out swinging the way you have, but not with our keys in our hands in a closet. Right. No keys, no keys. There are better ways. And we're all going to learn it in your protection book. Yeah. <laughs> I keep, I keep talking about this. And I think it was um, Tiffany Boggins from uh, Witch Lab Wednesdays said, we're going to, we're just going to, we're just going to make a class called how to be a badass with Amy Blackthorne. And we'll just get it. Just, people will show up and, and you'll, you'll fix them. <laughs> It'll be great. I bet your next book, I bet your next I'd book sign is up called for that. Blackthorne's Badassery. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I would, I would totally sign up for that. Yeah. So um, you are also um, teaching at So Moat That Con, a class called Witches Guardians of the Liminal. Um, and you've already given us a taste of some of the um, really beautiful philosophy behind that but what can people specifically expect from the workshop 
So we're going to talk about a little bit of the philosophy, a little bit of how to transmute ourselves, how to create the the you that you want to be through embracing those those ideas of change through the the rebirth in the cauldron. But there'll also be some fun things like mixology, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, some some potions and some ideas from Blackthorn's Botanical Brews. I love that so, book. <laughs> we'll talk about how to make your own potions. We'll talk about how to create your own syrups in the kitchen. Um, Any time in botanical brews, it was really important to me um, as a child of alcoholic parents to make sure that any time an alcohol was mentioned in a magical context in this book, there is a um, a non-alcoholic substitution created right there. It's actually got its own little emblem of a, a an old fashioned glass with a line through it. Mm. So we know that I wanted to make sure everyone was included. Um, I went for, two years on a a migraine medication where I couldn't have anything to drink, not a drop. And so it doesn't matter why you choose not to drink, why you aren't your best self when you're um, around alcoholic beverages. It's no one's business. Why Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that you're seen, felt, heard um, and understood. So even the the chapter on magic in the kitchen, the the syrups and all sorts of neat projects that are in there in the kitchen chapters, not a single mention of alcohol. So there's, places in the book where you can just skip over that. So we have a listener question. We'd love to get some assistance from you on it. And um, here is what the listener said, was wondering if someone would point me to the episode where one of you mentions the refocusing spell or something like it that is used to keep another person away from you. Specifically, my sister's ex, who was really giving her so much an unnecessary issue. And I really think that refocus would be great for him. I was thinking that they'd even broken up, but I can't for the life of me figure out which episode it was mentioned in. I keep trying, but I figured there was no harm in asking here. Hope that was correct. I really love your podcast. I'm learning so much. It's been amazing. Thank you, listener. We always appreciate people letting us know that they're, this is meaning something to them. Um, I have terrible news for you. I don't remember anything from any episode ever. So I'm afraid I can, <laughs> I don't know when I said it. If it was more than a month ago, I definitely don't know. So this a is month. Why- oh my God. Get, come on. A month. I feel like a day. Re, re, tell a us day. something that we talked about in June. I mean, I don't, I don't know anything from see, a day ago. See, okay, there you go. All right, there we go. Okay. That's what I'm saying. I'm like a month, it. a I day. Was, I was taking this as I was taking it personally before I needed to. I forgot. Oh my God. <laughs> June was a completely well, different year. <laughs> that was a completely different time. I was a different person two months ago. Get it together. <laughs> <laughs> but the good news is, listener, Jeez. Amy Blackthorne is here and is going to help us out. So- um thoughts about a refocusing spell i love this person is like really wanting to get rid of their sister's ex i love this person so I'm much that. Yeah. <laughs> fuck that ex all right what do we do to get rid of the sister's ex amy my favorite uh is a spell i started using when i was probably 16 um i started using this freezer spell that i found in a silver raven wolf book that i'm you know i'm yeah. sure don't hey, don't shit on the silver raven wolf freezer spells i mean come on there's you, there's tried or true like the black pack totally black yes of the witchcraft world they're gonna work with anything eventually you need to have a. that's beer. right i went i yes. was in um votech i was in my my county school going to classes for horticulture started my horticulture studio studies when i was in high school got credit for it it was great but the teacher down the way the guy who taught culinary thought i was super cute um but you are super cute he was right yes but he's a gross old man oh yeah but he's uh, a teacher yeah super gross okay so he he was right and he was gross so there's like those two things are not mutually exclusive you are correct yes uh so what i did was i i went to my trusty book I th- it was probably teen witch i was i was a knee high to a grasshopper so it probably was teen witch I said, okay, I have added some bits from the lovely and incredible Dorothy Morrison. So I, I get my freezer bag, I get my little plastic bag and I get my index card. I keep them, I keep a stack of index cards on my altar. Cause I'm, I'm going to do some stuff, write his name on it. If you have his birth date, his Facebook name, whatever identifying information you have for this person, put it all in an index card. Cause we want to be really specific. 
<laughs> I love how organized Black Thorn magic is. It's like an index card, and you list it. Out. I bet you do bullet points on your index cards and your spells. Don't you? I knew it. I felt it. I felt it. It's the double <laughs> Virgo. I like. I wear it like a four <laughs> on my forehead. Double Virgo organizes her list what, by list. What color? The color <laughs> index card, Amy. I bet you have a system for. I colors. do. She does. She's reaching for them. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> They're right here. <laughs> I'm, I'm I, I love am in, it. In, in. <laughs> so I I just grab the biggest, fattest Sharpie you can find. I keep real big, like two inch fat ones for shipping. Not one inch fat ones. It's the two inch fat yeah. ones. So I, I, you put a big <laughs> vertical line through his name, through all his information. It's the rune Isa mm. for ice. Like stop him right where he's at. Put it in that fabulous little Ziploc bag you've got. Now get out your mortar and pestle. Very handy to have. And some aspirin. And a handful of okay. aspirin. Put it in the mortar and pestle. Crush it up until it's powder. Put that in there. Now, why in the world would you do that? Because when you add yeah. water to aspirin, you get salicylic acid. We didn't know. Oh. Chemistry and your witchcraft. Oh, I didn't yes. know that. Yes, so don't, yeah, so don't awesome. keep your aspirin in your bathroom cabinet. Don't do that. Put it, Keep it somewhere where it's drier because it'll actually, it, it, it's, very, it's bad for you as the person taking the aspirin. Don't keep it in the, in the damp places. But then why do we take it with water? But I guess it doesn't matter. You're actually you diluting it. it, so you get very. You have you don't take a sip of water oh. when you when you take your out. They tell you take a use a full glass of water when you take it with your um, internally. Don't ever just take that okay. little sip. You see it people on TV and the movies like, oh, I take a little little rabbit sip of of water for my salt pepper medicine. Take you drink yeah. that whole glass because otherwise you're you'll you'll mess with your kidneys and your liver. Don't damage your kidneys and your liver. You need those. Uh, so. You get your salicylic acid. You put a little bit of water in there because we want that acid. So what we're doing mm -hmm. is we're freezing our piece of paper with that water. But if there's ever such a time that he becomes no longer a problem, you decide you want to take that piece of paper out of the freezer, you can throw it away intact in that baggie, knowing that the salicylic acid will eat away at that paper and it will not allow him to come back into her life should you decide that it's time to get rid of this piece of paper. So, so we're keeping the redundancies oh. in there. That water and salicylic acid is something Dorothy calls swamp water. You can read about it in uh, Utterly Wicked. She talks about it in okay. Utterly Wicked Curses, Hexes, and Other Unsavory Notions. I did the forward for mm. the reissue of it last year. It came out last May. Amazing. So it's incredible. You can read all about Dorothy's talking about it. It's really in-depth. Really fantastic. So yes, swamp water is a great magical tool. So my advice, listener, is to do what Amy said. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm like, yeah, I don't even have, I mean, like, what can you even add to that? Um, I mean, I love, I love freezer spells, but I love that addition because there's always that scenario where you're like, well, what if I'm like move and I want to get rid of this thing? Yes. That was my fear and when then, I moved. Cause my, my actually we, we had a hard time storing food in the freezer in New York. Cause what, it wasn't a very big freezer. And also I had a lot of fuckers in there on ice. So there, we really didn't have a lot of room to freeze food because I had too many. I enemies. mean, that's so, that, but that's so <laughs> smart. Adding that is so smart. Yeah. Because I think then, then if you dispose of it, it doesn't matter. It's not like, you know, you know, it's not, it's, it's still going to be uncomfortable for that person. Yeah. And I, I listener, I like Amy's approach and I know listener, you mentioned you wanted to put a refocusing spell on the guy to keep him away. I think that that's probably not the most effective use of your magical energy because trying to get someone to focus away. Um, if it's not, I think it can yeah, be it's better to freeze them out. Right. Yeah. It, I think it can be fruitful. If that person is focused on you, you can do some refocusing. Um, one of the things Evo Dominguez Jr. has often suggested is about incorporating ancestor help to say, Hey, could you stand in? And then they start to basically they start running in circles or chasing a ghost because the ancestors energy is a little more ubiquitous. It's everywhere, but it still kind of feels like you. So they start like, finding themselves wandering off. And then at some point something will, will get their attention, but to refocus someone's energy, who's focused on someone else, there's just, it's a lot, there's a lot more efficient ways to do that. Like the swamp water spell sounds like a far better way to go. Um, something I used when I needed what I, what I call blast this bitch, when I needed to get rid of somebody who was pestering, um, somebody in my life, 
um, was I took their name. Um, I think actually I downloaded their picture from Facebook, which is why social media is really great. And I stuck it in a lemon and I soaked it in vinegar. And so what I wanted was like the discomfort of lemon juice in a cut. So I wanted this person to be as uncomfortable in the situation as they would be as if they'd had a lemon juice in a cut. And then I, um, I disposed in the lemon. So that's another thing that you, you could do if you'd rather go with that way. I think I'm going to experiment with the aspirin at some point because that just sounds like fun. Making yeah, my own too. salicylic acid. <laughs> well, Amy, in the meantime, uh, you mentioned that you've um, got your, you know, your book coming out in January, your top secret book, which is coming out at some point in the future from there. Um, you also have a podcast. I, I do. I just did a really awesome episode with uh, Shanna Stoker, who is the descendant of Bram Stoker. So that, oh! Yes. oh! Oh my God! <laughs> wow! So the, where can people yeah, where can people find your podcast? So it is called the Blackthorn Grove, and you can find it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor, anywhere you listen to podcasts. It's already available, waiting for you. Spotify has been okay. really neat. I'm, I mean, since Spotify bought Anchor and put they put all this money into their infrastructure, and I'm really tickled with the things that they're doing. So you can check out. Uh, the Blackthorn Grove podcast and see some of the really fun things that we're doing. Oh yeah. I had a really great time being on your show a couple months ago. That was super fun. Yeah. Enjoyed the hell out of that. So definitely add Blackthorn Grove to your rotation, which is we can't get enough podcasts out there. Um, and uh, where can people reach you and, and keep in touch with all of the fabulous stuff that you're doing? My favorite thing right now is making sure that I, I'm doing an A to Z in essential oils over on TikTok. You can check out at Blackthorns oh. Botanicals. You can find out all the fabulous things that we're doing with. I'm I'm just picking random things from A to Z for magical purposes. Uh, super fun. You can also check out my my dogs are on my TikTok. Uh. Oh, okay, <laughs> definitely, definitely coming over. I mean, yeah, that's like mm-hmm. clearly that needs I, to I happen. Mean, that is enough. Yeah, that's enough for uh, me too. My oh. Instagram is Amy Blackthorn Author. And one of your previous guests just posted my tea on her Instagram. So on, on my birthday, which was like the best thing ever. Which one? Stormy Daniels face Instagram. <laughs> yeah, with- <laughs> yeah. My tea and Mortellus's book. Do I have to wear black or both? featured um, right there on her front page. Like, oh hey. All right. And it's my birthday. Stormy, so it's my birthday like- that's Stormy awesome. is the best at like at, at like promoting and pushing out awesome work by witches. She's just awesome. Yeah. She's awesome. She's so awesome. Yeah. So she's one of us. By the way, she is fine from the store. She's posted on Instagram Good. that she's, that, she, you know, know that she is, um, her house was safe. I think they said they were out, out of power and that um, she was drinking for free down the street. <laughs> nice. So she's doing okay. Yeah. Nice. Stormy, Stormy, Stormy weathered the storm. She's all right. So, uh, oh, okay. and uh, Amy Blackthorn, author on Facebook. You can also check things out. There. There's always ridiculous memes on there. Witchcraft down and dirty. You have the and... best meme. I mean, we're going to, Matt, we steal a lot of your memes because your memes are really good. We do. We do steal a lot of your memes. Yeah. Not, I'm not, I'm not even going <laughs> to pretend that we don't. No, we steal all the memes all the time, but that's what they're there for. That's absolutely so, yeah okay well amy it's a pleasure as always we're so happy that you're going to be with us at so that con and um oh thank God, you so for bringing your you know your authentic your authenticity and your knowledge and just your badassery so um i will never carry my keys in my claw again <laughs> thank you thank you thank you, thank thank you. you to amy blackthorne <laughs> and thank you all to the rest of you for listening don't forget if you want to support the show best way is to subscribe and spread the word please leave us a rating review us on apple Podcasts, or buy us a coffee check out our merch in our etsy store um for bonus content including our full conversation with amy um consider becoming a supporter on patreon we are on facebook twitter and instagram for show notes audio trans- Transcript, or to ask a question to answer in a future episode, go to thatwitchlife.com. Do not forget to sign up for SoMote.com. Early bird registration ends September 21st. And do not forget to follow Amy Blackthorne and all of the various places. And until we speak again, keep moting that shit. We'll talk to you fuckers next week. Yay! Bye! <laughs> so mote it be. That's hilarious. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. That's funny. Oh, no! <laughs> Piss floss. No one will know what that means. <laughs>
super clever. <laughs> and the show's over. <laughs> You're never going to stop laughing. We're fucked. <laughs>